Good morning and welcome to Wednesday's writing lesson for this week. So yesterday I think you were planning your uh, story ending and today you're going to start drafting it but before you do that there's a nasty writing task as normal. I come this side I think you can see it better. What I've done today is given you some great year six words. Um, some of them are year six words from your year six word list and some of them use year six spelling patterns. Um, we've got suspicious, hesitant, aggressive or aggressively if you want to describe how someone's doing something, malicious, determined, visible, immediate or immediately. That's a great um, adverb isn't it? We can use it a lot as a fronted adverbial as well and recognise. And I have put the definitions on the nasty writing task sheet in blue um, just to make it clear what those words mean because you might not um, be 100% sure with some of them. So you need to write some sentences that use these words in them, some good year six sentences. And the idea is, what I thought was, you could try and use some of these words in your writing for today. Um, so this is just a bit easier for me to write on. I'm going to just try and write one sentence just to show you what I might do. I think I'm going to use the word suspicious in my sentence today, which means that you distrust somebody or something. And you might show that distrust or you might just have a distrust, a, a distrust inside and you don't mention it to anyone else. So I'm, I thought immediately at the beginning of my story. Uh, the beginning of my story ending, that is, where Ron thinks he sees a Malfoy crab and Goyle leaving Hermione's room, probably stealing her wand. So, um, I don't know what that noise is that's gone off in the background. Oh, it's gone now, that's good. So, I'm going to start my sentence. I think it's not a very great start to my sentence, so I'm going to leave a space in case I think of a better start. And I'm going to start by describing what Ron saw. Um, so Ron saw, don't forget to use the past tense because it's a story, if you don't mind, just for the nasty writing so I don't take too long, I'm just going to put initials for their names. But if I was writing my story I'd obviously write them out properly. Ron saw Malfoy, Crab and Goyle um, running, I think they would be running wouldn't they, running out of Hermione's room. remember my apostrophe because it's Hermione's room running out of Hermione's room suspiciously so I can't just write suspicious can I I can't say Ron saw Malfoy Crab and Goyle running out of Hermione's room suspicious I have to say suspiciously because it describes how they were running so I wonder if I can think of a fronted adverbial to make my sentence start a bit more interestingly Mm. Oh, I know. He could have been walking down the corridor and then he heard a noise, like a door slam or something. So I could say that he was walking along and then he was startled by the noise behind him. So that's going to be my start. Startled by, I'm just going to put it up here because I'm running out of space. Startled by a noise behind him. Don't forget your comma to separate it from the main clause. Startled by a noise behind him, Ron saw Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle running out of Hermione's room suspiciously. Right, so that's my nasty writing. I might be able to use that in my story today. So the main task today, don't forget, you can always pause the video there to do your nasty writing and then come back to it. The main task today is to draft our story ending. And there's a checklist, as usual, a success criteria on the daily learning page. And you should have your plan from yesterday, either on a sheet like mine or written in your book somewhere. So I'm going to use my plan because that tells me what's going to happen in my story ending. But I'm also going to look at the checklist to remind me what things I need to include. So at the top here, we've got things like describing the setting and the character. So I can use my plan and also my notes from Monday to help me do that need to remember all my basic punctuation, but don't forget, I can always um, sort that out tomorrow in the editing lesson. I need to use the past tense. 
But again, if I make any mistakes with that, I can correct it tomorrow. I need to include some speech that tells the reader something that moves the story forward or tells the reader something about character, but don't put too much in. I need to think about still creating the atmosphere for the reader so that it's not just a list of what happened because that's really boring. And I'm going to try and make sure I'm using my I saw a ups and my relative clauses so that I'm always putting in that extra information for the reader as well. I might also try to include, I might, no pun intended, um, to include some modal verbs from my nasty writing on Tuesday, yesterday, what might have or could have happened. Those might be quite useful in my story today. What I always suggest with the checklist actually is that you write your story and then when you've written a few sentences, you might read it back and see how it sounds. And then you might look at your checklist and think, hmm, my sentences are all quite short or they all start the same way. What haven't I included from here? I think that's the easiest way to use a checklist because I think if you look at the checklist first and then try to write it, it's um, a lot more tricky to do that. Anyway, that's just how I, how I use it. So I'm going to start my story with the line that's up here. I'm not going to write it out again, but my story has to start. Terrible news, gasped Hermione as she ran. I can't read my own writing, it's too small. But you know, it's on, it's on, the, it's on the task sheet. A terrible news, gasped Hermione as she ran. Do you know, I'm going to have to look at the computer to see what it says. Can you still hear me? I hope so. Terrible news, gasped Hermione as she ran up to the two young wizards. My wand is gone. Sorry about that. And I'm going to start with some speech that I wrote in my plan here. It's Ron replying to Hermione. Hang on a minute. Um, don't forget your closing inverted commas. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What could I use instead of said? Exclaimed. Hang on a minute, exclaimed Ron. Um, I saw, and I'm just going to put their initials again, Malfoy, Crab and Goyle um, running out of your room earlier. It's not exactly the same as my nasty writing. But I am going to try and get that word in again, that good year six word. I thought they looked suspicious. So can you see I've used a bit of parenthesis at the end there to give some in information, extra information. I thought they looked suspicious. And if I'm not sure how to spell it, I can just look back at my nasty writing sheet, can't I? I think I'll put another in exclamation mark there. Hang on a minute, exclaimed Ron. I saw Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle running out of your room earlier. I thought they looked suspicious. So I've used my speech and I've said about that. Now what am I going to say next? So the three friends try to think of a plan. Hermione and Ron persuade, sorry, Harry and Ron persuade Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle to go outside for a broomstick race. And Hermione goes to the room to search for her wand. But then, unfortunately, McGonagall saw the race and put them all in detention. A cleaner came into the room and Hermione had to hide under the bed. And she found the wand under the bed wrapped in a blanket. This is in my story. Um, but unfortunately, the cleaner then locked the door when they went out and Hermione was trapped. So in my story, I'm going to have Neville Longbottom, who was in the broomstick race clip. He walked through the detention room and Harry and Ron asked them, Neville to help them and he's going to come to the rescue in my story he's going to be the hero and he's going to um, free Hermione somehow from the room he's making some sort of spell and then um, they're going to go on and make some sort of spell together which they find in a book because Hermione loves getting spells from books um, and they're going to make Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle make a massive mess in the detention room so they, they kind of haven't got control of their bodies and they're going to make them make a big mess so then they're going to be forced to miss the parents' evening show and the three friends get to do their magic display after all. That's what's going to happen in my story. So you can always magpie bits of that that you like or get some ideas. Um, but you're going to make up your own story ending based on your plan yesterday. So now I need to say that the three friends 
tried to think of a plan together. Hang on a minute, exclaimed Ron. I saw Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle running out of your room earlier. I thought they looked suspicious. Oh, I know. Harry's going to talk now. And he's going to come to the realisation. Wait, do you think they stole Hermione's wand? But that's okay. That's not speech for the sake of it, is it? That's speech that's telling the reader what uh, the, the friends think has happened. So I need to start a new line. Wait, do you think they stole Hermione's wand? I'm just going to put H's wand, if that's okay, to save a bit of time. Now, what punctuation do I need there? Wait, do you think they stole Hermione's wand? It's a question, isn't it? I need a question mark and I need to close my speech again. Um, and that's Harry talking. I need to tell the reader that's Harry, not Hermione. Let's use the word, not said, responded. Because he's responding to Ron, isn't he? And what could he be doing as he responds? So we're thinking about adding extra information, aren't we? When uh, people are talking as well. Harry responded, frowning. I think he'd be frowning as he thought of those three horrible boys. Um, comma, so it's a bit of parenthesis at the end of my sentence. Frowning as he thought of their three, usually write numbers as words when you're writing a story, three mean, what could I call them? As he thought of their three mean boys, three mean wizards, classmates, maybe? They're three mean classmates. They're certainly not their friends, are they? Wait, do you think they stole Hermione's wand? Harry responded, frowning as he thought of their three mean classmates. I think Hermione is going to feel quite cross about this, isn't she? And I think she's going to say, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure they must have done. Because um, if Ron saw them running out of my room, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, that's what she can say. I wouldn't put it past them. Oh, I've used a modal verb there as well. I wouldn't put it past them. Um, I'm just going to use said now, because you can use said just don't want to use it all the time, said Hermione. And I think she's getting angrier and angrier the more she thinks about it. So I could use another um, subordinating clause at the end, or a relative clause maybe. I wouldn't put it past them, said Hermione, who was getting angrier by the second. Angrier by the second. There we go. Um, I think I've run out of space now, really, haven't I? But I think what I would go on to say next is that they need to think of a plan. That's the next part of my plan. Um, so I think what I'm going to say is that because it's very noisy and busy in the corridor where they're standing, they need to go and find somewhere quieter to sit and talk and discuss and make a plan. So I think then I would talk about the atmosphere in the corridor. So I might say something like, um, there were... There were people everywhere in the corridor. Students and teachers were bustling past them, hurrying to get to their next lesson, chattering like magpies. Um, let's go somewhere quieter, suggested Harry, so we can think of a plan. So that's how I think I'm going to continue my story. And then I'm going to have to describe them getting to uh, somewhere quieter, maybe the library, to talk their plan over. Thing I do need to think about when I'm doing this is where my paragraphs are going to begin and end. So this is really my first paragraph and then I think when they go somewhere else to discuss their plan that will be the beginning of my paragraph two. So you might, you know, you decide how many paragraphs you're going to have in your story ending. You might have one but it's more likely that you would have at least two, maybe three or four shorter paragraphs. Because my first paragraph isn't going to be that long is it? It's going to say that people were hurrying past, it was noisy, it was busy, so Harry suggested they went somewhere quieter. They walk off. It's almost like that's the end of that scene in the film, and then the next scene is a new paragraph. 
So think about that when you're writing today as well. Okay, I hope you have fun writing your story endings today. And today, actually, I forgot to say this, is the day we'd like you to submit your writing work to your teacher. So your, your teacher's going to have a look at your story ending today when you've finished writing it. So you don't have to publish it, just send it in as it is, and your teachers would love to see it. Okay, have fun. Bye.